The text for our meditation today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There are times where we are at the end of our wits, where we can't do anything more, where we just want to give up, where we lose hope. Certain people console themselves, saying, God will never give you more than you are able to handle. But Scripture doesn't say that. No, the Bible says that God will not let us be tempted beyond what we are able to endure. In other words, what the Bible says is that God does not force us to sin. But he doesn't say anything about pushing us past our limits. Paul, as he was writing his second letter to the Corinthians, expresses the depth of the human experience, the depth of their sufferings and their difficulties, both what he and his colleagues were enduring. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, of the affliction that we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Paul isn't the only one to feel this level of desperation. Job. Job also gave up in light of the difficulties, the challenges that he had to face. The loss of his animals, the death of all of his children, and the sores that were on his body. Job's wife said to him, curse God and die. And he, he went to the point of cursing the day of his birth when he said, oh, that they would disappear the day when I was born and the night that said, a vigorous boy has been conceived. Why didn't I die in my mother's womb? Why didn't I stop breathing in my mother's womb? Like Paul and many others, Job was hopeless and didn't want to live any longer. And we also face times of suffering, times where we are pushed to our limits, when we no longer know what to do, days where we don't know how we're going to get out of a difficult situation, seasons where we no longer want to live. Job and Paul both serve as examples of faith in these times. Because in spite of the difficulties, they still trusted in the Lord. Job asked the question, should we accept that which is good from God and also not, and not that which is evil? Job endured four different kinds of suffering. He suffered the loss of goods and of his loved ones. He had physical suffering because of the sores that he had. He had the emotional suffering and the shame that went along with it. And finally, he suffered hopelessness when his friends told him that God didn't love him, that he had committed some kind of sin, and that he deserved the punishment from God that he was enduring. When you suffer, when you grieve, when you cry, when you pray, when you, when you ask God questions and advocate for yourself. Well, you're asking, have I deserved what I'm getting? And the longer that you live, the more you will experience the same types of suffering that Job experienced. You will lose goods. Your loved ones will die. You will have health problems. You will have people with 
that are well-intentioned who come up to you and only make matters worse by what they say. I can't give you an easy answer why there are sufferings in this life. I don't have a direct revelation from God as some of the prophets did where I can make a link between this event and this sin where the people had the temple destroyed because of the people's sins. No. But the fact that you suffer is not necessarily a sign that you are being punished by God. Neither is it a sign of what the Lord thinks of you. I don't have an answer to the question, why? But I will tell you what the Lord has to say. God says to you, I love you. I have suffered for you. I forgive you. I have not abandoned you, and I never will. How can we know this? Because of Jesus' cry from the cross, my God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? Why? This is not a hypothetical question. Jesus understood that he had to suffer. Long before he was crucified, he showed his disciples that he had to go to Jerusalem and suffer at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the religious leaders and the teachers of the law, that he had to be put to death and be raised again the third day. Jesus knew why. He had the mental understanding of it. But in the moment, Jesus himself asked the same question, why? He didn't deserve punishment. He was innocent. He was righteous. He was faithful. And in that moment, he heard nothing from his father. Crickets. He didn't get the answer to the question, why? He had to simply trust the word of his father, that had said to him, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. Did the father love Jesus, even though he let Jesus suffer? Yes! The fact that you suffer doesn't mean that God has turned his back on you. When you suffer, it is not because God does not love you, Jesus also suffered. He suffered for you to save you from an eternity of suffering, the consequences of your sin. But in the moment, in that tough time, it is so easy to accuse God of being indifferent, of not caring for us. Repent. Know that in Christ you are a child of God, that you are loved by him, and that with you he is well pleased for the sake of Christ. The disciples in the boat in the midst of the storm doubted the fact that God loved them. Master, do you not care that we are about to perish? They accused Jesus of not caring about them. Jesus, stop the storm. Silence, be still. But then he disciplines, he instructs his disciples. Why? Why are you so afraid? How is it that you don't have faith? Even if God doesn't deliver us from all trials and difficulties, we know that he has done everything for our salvation, that we shall not perish eternally. St. Paul, in our epistle, says, 
Indeed, we felt that we've, we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. In the midst of our difficulties, God pushes us to trust in him all the more. And the God, the Father who raised his son Jesus from the dead, promises to do the same for you. And while we're suffering, it is the promises of God that sustain us in our faith so that we do not lose hope. This is my consolation in my suffering. The promises that give me life. My help comes from the Lord, He who made heaven and earth. Do not be surprised when difficult times come, as if this is something strange. Rejoice and be glad that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, that you also will rejoice with him the day that his glory will be revealed. The Father, full of compassion, and the God of all comfort, comforts us in all of our mourning, in all of our distress so that we might comfort others in their distress. God does not abandon you. Christ died for you. Christ suffered for you. Christ loves you. Your comfort, it is the compassion of a God who suffered for you. And suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint because of the love of God, which is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The Bible, it teaches that God is all-powerful, that God is good, and that there are sufferings in this life. And we, we ask the question, how is it that a good and all-powerful God can allow us to suffer. I don't know. What I do know is that God is not indifferent to our sufferings, but that he acts, that he does everything out of his great love for us. That he has dealt with the very source of our sufferings, that he has dealt with sin once and for all by the death of his son, who suffered for us. And so we know that all of our trials work for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his plan and purpose. And that plan and purpose includes the day where Christ himself will come in glory and when he will wipe every tear from their eyes. That day when death will be no more. And there will be no more mourning or crying or suffering because the former things will have passed away. In the midst of your suffering, Christ has suffered for you to put an end once and for all to suffering. And your sufferings will come to an end when he comes again in glory. Do not give up hope. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus, and his great love for you. In Jesus' name, amen.